Now we're going towards the uh, Clayton Observatory. What's the Clayton Observatory? Well, it's the only observatory at Clayton, so um, this is my little observatory and I'm known as the mad astronomer here. This is a, oh, it's a small observatory, it's about 10 square metres. Um, I built this uh, th three years ago. This photograph is um, of Saturn, taken at three different periods during the course of a night. It actually um, shows a photograph of what's called the dragon storm. It's a big storm that became evident after the ring crossing. For long periods of time in Saturn's orbit, the rings cover one hemisphere of the planet. With the northern hemisphere, it's, it's just come out of um, a, um, a long period of time, about 13 years. All of a sudden, we started getting this storm activity. The reason why this is um, fairly important is because um, I came uh, second to uh, Damien Peach um, of the UK um, in the solar system, system section for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year Award. Oh, absolutely stoked. Um, totally did not um, expect any of this at all. Um, I honestly thought that you know, I'd do okay, but that, that, was, um, that was a bit of a surprise. I knew on the night that the air quality was very still. I could see Cassini's division through the eyepiece and I could see hints of the Inky division, which is very, very small. It's um, technically not, you're not able to see it, but um, I could see it. So I thought, oh, this is a fantastic night. What is that? What's the Inky division? The Inky division, right. It's, this is the Cassini division. That's the black, the deep black one. And on these little pieces here, you can just on the edge, you can just see a little thin line here, very tiny thin line. That's the Inky division. It's about 300 kilometers in width. So it's very, very special to be able to get that. When I processed it, it's the sharpest image I've ever produced of that particular object. I really enjoy taking um, planetary work. And when the, the air quality is very, very good, very still, very transparent, you get great images like this. And they are very rare and few and far between here in South Australia. Actually, this image wasn't taken here. This was taken in Adelaide. I have a similar mount in Adelaide, much bigger telescope, a 14 inch telescope made by Celestron. Um, a little bit bigger than that particular telescope there. That telescope is designed purely for taking planetary work. So the conditions were um, very, very still. It was a very still night. I walked outside, I looked up, and the stars weren't twinkling at all. There was no scintillation, there was nothing. It was just still. When I looked in the eyepiece, then I knew what was going on. This, this sort of imaging is, is done with uh, tricolour imaging. Red, green, and blue filters. I take a video in red, um, say for this one for instance, about two minutes in red, two minutes in green, two minutes in blue. In that period of time the camera takes lots and lots of frames, like a video, at about 30, 30 to 40 frames per second. At the end of that, when I go to go inside, the processing starts. That's where the real work starts. The, um, the capturing side of it is a bit automated. Works, I have some software, turns a filter wheel, takes, turns the camera on, off, that sort of thing, downloads, that sort of stuff. Processing side of it is, is a little bit complicated, but uh, the short of it is it stacks all the good frames. So there's a selection process of the, the good frames. And then you combine all those good frames together and then sharpen them a little bit. Take it into another piece of software, sharpen it a bit more, and then finally into Photoshop to, to get the color rendering right. So when you look through your telescope with your naked eye, can you even do that? Is there an eyepiece on your telescope? So that, did you see Saturn with your naked absolutely, eye Absolutely, absolutely, yes. You can see in any telescope Saturn looking like this on a really good night. Most people see it much smaller, much smaller, tiny, it'll be appear tiny, but you can see detail. At higher magnification, the air moves it a bit, but if the, on that particular night, it looked like this. You could see that storm and you could see the Yes, ring. you could see the storm. That's, because that storm has a, a, what's called a, a quite high albedo feature. It's actually contrasted quite well against the planet. Does it look that colourful when you look at it with your eye? Oh, no, that, that, that is interesting. Most of the time it looks like a yellowy, orangey colour. Um, on some nights, particularly around the time of opposition, that's when it's opposite the sun and to us and we're in the middle, um, you'll get the rings being really, really bright and they'll sort of, that's called the Selig effect. Jupiter, on the other hand, produces colour. Um, you can see red and you can see festoons of, of blue and all that sort of thing. Have you got a picture of Jupiter? I do, yes. So you can see here, there's some colour here in the, the festoons in the, in the central area, which is called the, um, 
the equatorial belt. You can see a moon here that has some detail on it. And of course the great red spot, which has been around for 300 years. Most people would know about that. Jupiter is more colorful than Saturn to look at. Yeah, visually it is, yeah. Um, you need a good night to get good detail, but you can see more color in it. Um, the blue festoons in particular are ob obvious to the eye. In this day and age, there are some amazing pictures of Saturn going around. There's a space probe currently at Saturn. What's the role for someone like you? What's the point of taking pictures of Saturn on Earth when we can just go onto the NASA website and look at amazing pictures of Saturn? What, what, why do you do it? Well, interestingly, amateurs can contribute quite a lot. Um, we have the capacity to take lots and lots of images because there's thousands of us doing this now. Um, admittedly, when in 2004, when I first started doing planetary imaging, there weren't many people around. There were probably 100 or so um, and contributing. Now there's thousands and thousands of people, which is great because at any one point in time, someone is taking an image of one of these great planets. And the beauty of it is that we can contribute to science programs. Scientists need to have photographs to compare and Hubble's not always available. Cassini is not always taking images at the same time. So we can actually contribute as amateurs to actual science programs. The Jupiter images, for instance, I contribute to uh, GPOS, which is um, through the British Astronomical um, Association. Scientists use these images just specifically for um, confirmation of their theories and their ideas. So we can contribute. Is that why you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that and I, I like to make pretty pictures, so yeah. My wife uh, seems to think that um, it is a bit of a nerdy hobby, but um, even nerds can have fun. At least it keeps you out of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>